All right, we are live with another episode of Remote Voices. Uh, we do not have a guest this week. It's just going to be us three founders, uh, and we're just going to talk about some current news. We're going to show off our brand new desktop app and kind of talk about the crazy change log that we posted this week and all the uh, awesome updates there. Uh, but let's, yeah, let's just dive right into it. Uh, everybody give a thumbs up. Jordan Hunter, you can hear me. Yeah. We can hear you. Everything's good. All right, let's go. Good to go. Cool. So first post, um, this is not remote work related, but it is super tech related. And I think also just a little bit like um, remote technology related. You can't go to a concert, so have one in Fortnite. Um, I saw a bunch of really cool posts about this on Twitter um, this week, just talking about how cool it was. I watched this video actually. Um, I think it's insane to think that this could be the future of kind of entertainment. I don't know, Jordan, you're probably closest to this. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I wish I could have saw this live. I know they're doing another one Saturday that I'm interested in, but I think this was just absolutely nuts. And especially for like all the, the Gen Z type kids, I, I was talking to my cousin about it because he's in that age bracket. I came and his friends, like we're all on in a party together like while watching this and they're all like you know raging if you will like together hmm. so i just think it's really really interesting this is like one of the first times that like we're seeing really early versions of this and i don't think it's slowing down anytime well i heard that he dropped an exclusive track too which i think is interesting to like that this could be the future of you know drops yeah yeah he dropped uh, some merchandise with the event um and then like a new song too so that just helped it you know obviously blow up and take over the internet it was just it's just crazy to see this like pulled off and like how excited everybody was about it yeah i think i think it's cool because it gives you as a concert goer a different experience like they changed the gravity in the game and like people were like floating all around there's all these big explosions um you as an entertainer obviously get to do stuff that you could never do in real life um i i wonder what the future of this is obviously he's a i am assuming pre-animated pre-rigged 3d model i don't think it's like capturing him real time but i'm wondering if the future of this is a real version of him a hologram a video i don't know hunter do you think that would look weird or do you think that's where it's gonna go yeah i saw a video of him getting rigged up and uh so i'm gonna assume that it was pre-recorded but it's pretty cool i i can't help but wonder what else are we gonna be able to do in fortnite you know like snapchat ended up putting out like snap kit um so I can I can imagine a world in which I could like host a full meeting. Like right now, it's just kids, but 12 million viewers—that's a lot of people. Uh, what's What's that going to look like in five years? When When you said all those kids, okay, you guys are entering into the workforce. Let's uh, Let's all get into Fortnite or whatever the game is at the time. Let's go hop on a meeting. Like I can't imagine them not yeah. being open. To well, I wonder, if they'll, I wonder if they'll keep the name Fortnite. Like, do you yeah. think that it'll yeah. be called Fortnite in five years or it will be called, I don't know, they bought House Party. Maybe oh. this becomes House Party. Oh, they! I didn't realize they bought yeah, it. Yeah, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, that makes really so much sense. About this, like, like how we lean into async a lot, for like obviously in the workplace, but it's really cool that this kind of like almost promotes like async, like concert doors and, and stuff like that. Like seeing a concert not in yeah. real time. I think this gives more access to folks that you can't get concerts because normally when big artists like this tour they go to like the big cities like new york la places like that but if you live in the middle of america you know odds are travis scott isn't coming to random wyoming right but now you can partake in the concert with your friends and kind of do it on, on your own time so real curious to see what that looks like i think it's cool because it abstracts the typical way we think about doing something remote like i think um the, the four squares of zoom calls like you know the participant grid or whatever has become this like synonymous thing with doing something remote like um we talked about this i think what maybe one or two weeks ago where airbnb launched their remote experiences or whatever and yeah. i asked you hunter like do you think that's zoom or do you think they roll their own thing and you can't even tell because it literally just looks like a zoom call and it's that like grid look has become the like standard for what remote experiences look like and i think even this week skype and facebook both launch or no skype and uh hangouts launched the like zoom view which i guess is just the gallery view i'm not really even sure um but it's funny how that's just accepted as the standard way that things should look um and i think it's cool that fortnite is 
totally flipping on its head and saying like you're not even a photo of yourself you're a virtual 3d body and maybe and you're in a freaking banana suit or something and that's what represents you in this like metaverse environment <sighs> yeah that's nuts but uh should we move on to the next one so yeah what's next one. here let's see all right I'll, this is your center yeah so what was really cool is running remote did a thing called running uh, or is it remote aid 2020 uh, we helped raise money for the american red cross the goal was five thousand dollars we were just short of like a few hundred dollars um but some really cool people were there laurel Farr, uh andreas klinger um a few more like you can see the the stats in that infograph that they showed um one interesting thing was that it was like our, an actual fully remote conference so it wasn't like a zoom call uh I could click the networking button and I could hop into networking and it just put throws you into sort of like a chat roulette type of deal. And then it's one-on-one -on -one and then you have four minutes and that's it. So I met a lot of cool people that way, but then we had a virtual booth and for anybody that came out, it was really cool. We actually had some people from Yak come over and um, that was more traditional of like a zoom call. There was a chat and people asked questions, but I got so many people saying, you know, you guys were the only ones that actually stayed and actually answered questions the whole time. So I just so wanted to bring this up. Compare it, it to a real conference. Cause I wasn't there. I fed Emilio Mac and cheese in the middle of it, but, um, <laughs> <I> saw that. <laughs> what, uh, like what was the inter interaction? Like you can't shake hands. Um, you can't hand somebody a business right. card. So like, what, what's it like? Well, first of all, everybody there was really into remote. So it was easy to, to connect and actually be interacted with them. Every single person was in a good mood. I think when I go to places like CES, South by, you have a lot of like, all right, well, what's your name? Oh, well, what's your on, on your name tag? There's a lot of like dead time in between talking to people. And this, I was able to rapid fire one after another. So kind of like and, speed networking? Yeah, right. But it, it was twofold. One was if I liked the person, I immediately connected with them on LinkedIn and almost every single person I talked to added me on LinkedIn. So that was cool that we were able to follow up on those conversations. But I don't know if you ever got caught in like CES or somewhere and you don't like the conversation and then you're <laughs> stuck there for like 45 minutes and then you get caught into a, a meeting at a at a whatever we were at a Denny's with that with that one woman. Oh, we man, I was going to say, remember that right. Michelle Obama. Yeah, yeah. Oh, remember that guy at that. the networking event with Tech Nexus that kept getting closer to you? Like as you talk to him, that's what this reminded me of is we're all right. over there, like sipping our wine, like waiting for this guy to see how close he'll get to you while he talks to you as you just like increasingly back up. <laughs> it was, it was like that were some conversations, but honestly, a lot of them were great. So the ones that didn't go so well, I'm, I was so glad that it was only four minutes, but the other ones, we all agree. We're like, we need to keep going. Um, but I really enjoyed it. They did a great job with this event. So Plus, it was all for charity, which was which was a nice bonus. Yeah, there was some money raised and lots yeah. of networking that happened. It's cool to see companies pivot. And, you know, we were really looking forward to the, obviously, the physical manifestation of this. And I think it's really cool to see that instead of just giving up, there was a, you know what, let's just do it online. Let's raise some money while we're at it. I mean, 1,800 people is no joke. That obviously wouldn't be able to be pulled off in just a standard Zoom call. So... You know, it takes some special software, it takes some special organization. Like this is a very different way of pulling off an event and it's cool to see it happen like this. So Hunter, what was like your, your big one thing that you're like, if you had to do it again, you're like the reason to go, what is the one thing? Uh, the connections for sure. There's, I never thought I would say it, but um, there was just something about meeting people on, on those chats that I, I haven't really gotten anywhere else. Um, there were some of our users that came on. I had some really in-depth conversations with them uh, to the point where they were, <laughs> the one girl, Kai, she was like, Don't, shouldn't you be like doing something else? I was like, I'm here all day. <laughs> like, we're Should, literally the only ones. Shouldn't you be <laughs> working? Yeah. 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 Uh, I just, I really, I thoroughly enjoyed it. So um, the biggest takeaway is I can't believe the connections I was making in those four minutes or like those just personal conversations in the chats. I couldn't believe it. We don't have a slide for it, but I'm curious what your thoughts are. I mean, obviously uh, like clubhouse blew up over the weekend and I have some very strong anti VC Twitter <laughs> thoughts on it, but I'm also curious cause you've been following along with Cuppa, which is that like um, mm -hmm. virtual coffee thing. And 
don't know. I think there's, it's cool that you're saying that the thing that was really powerful was just connecting with people kind of face to face and it not being someone that you know. So it's not like an organized meeting where like you, you already know the person and you're meeting with them. This is like random people that you've never interfaced with before. And I think maybe there's a, like a huge opportunity for the flip side of something like a house party or a zoom call where you are meeting someone that you only very loosely know and you're just there to casually talk instead of like an agenda based system that's exactly what couple was uh i've been talking almost every single day with kp and uh, he's the founder over at cuppa and it was amazing it, it literally just brings up a schedule in front of you and you could pick like do you want to talk to a maker a vc mm. a founder cool. i picked maker because yeah. i relate to that i think the most right this second and uh he just actually launched on product hunt today oh cool uh, i think we'll have to go give him up but then yeah, yeah it was it was awesome i love the conversation but it was like instant connection to somebody and we just got right into the meet and he actually is in florida so oh, cool. shout out there so yeah like I, I think that's interesting to think about the future of like networking events and connecting with people at random being remote and instead of this like black box that we think of online meetings as these like pre-organized scheduled things that I think, I don't know, I guess I think of them as quite boring. Um, mm -hmm. I think it's interesting to think that there's maybe a future that's like exciting and unexpected and you meet somebody for the first time and have a good conversation just like you would in a coffee shop. Uh, so I'm excited for things like Cuppa to, you know, come out and kind of set, you know, challenge the status quo of the way we think about meeting people online. We should get him on the podcast. He's a yeah. really cool guy. Yeah, yeah that, that would be cool. Yeah. All right, what we got next? Let's see. So, um, this is sort of the same thing we were talking about here, right? Is that Facebook has come out with a new version of, I guess they call it hang, uh, rooms, messenger rooms is what I think they were calling rooms. it. Facebook rooms. Um, but it's free, has no time limit, up to 50 people, which is pretty big. And what I think is most interesting is you don't need a Facebook account for it because I thought that that was for sure going to be the the thing that kind of broke it. Uh, it's what I felt like the friction point was with Facebook workspaces was that, or whatever their work product is, is that it was like so tightly integrated to Facebook. It just felt like a weird invasion of your personal privacy, even though it was for work. This is interesting that they didn't make having a Facebook account a requirement, which we've talked about on this podcast before as kind of like a growth hack that Zoom had where you can just join a Zoom call and it's not, um, it doesn't ask you to log in or anything like that. Um, I just saw a tweet like right before I grabbed this one that was basically, I, oh, I think it was an Eli from The Verge. She was just saying, I'm over here laughing at the fact that Facebook and Google somehow didn't know that Zoom existed before the pandemic. Like it was like this wasn't, a competitor to them and now all of a sudden they are scrambling to build no. solutions to compete with them uh, hunter would you think this thing will work will will they pull it off will, will it pull people away from house party will it pull people away from zoom what do you think honestly man i don't think so no just no i, don't, I really don't think so yeah. they're trying to fix what's not really broken i think everybody already knows zoom is the go-to i think they just passed something stupid like 300 million users mm -hmm. i mean it's pretty clear that that everybody's trying to do the me too uh, like build like a me too copycat product and i just i don't know i'm not feeling it and i just don't know of anybody that's going to be super excited like finally i can get on with 50 people with no time right like who are we yeah. talking about here all those people that have that requirement have had it for over a month and they're already using something like zoom i don't so know i, I think Facebook events, like we see Facebook lives being really popular. I could see them pulling off sort of the same thing you guys did with uh, remote aid uh, over Facebook live and having like 50 guests or, you know, people pop in and things like that. I'm also curious because we talked, I think last week about the fact that uh, Facebook portals, one of the like most hard to get a hold of hardware items during the pandemic. So like clearly people are using this for something. And I saw a couple tweets recently that just basically said a Facebook portal is one of the most like grandma proof things ever. You just like buy it, you set it up, it just works. Um, you know, Jordan, you have a younger brother. I, does he even have a Facebook? No, so I for younger folks, I don't think they would ever use this, but like you just said, kind of like the, the grandma scenario, I think that's where this is really powerful. And I think even last time I like, talked about Facebook, 
like so for example my family was trying to do a, a, like a family zoom call the other day and my grandma couldn't get on because she can't figure out zoom but with something like this you know i know it says you don't need a facebook account but if she's able to just like hop in right from facebook you know i, I see you working there for a bunch of older folks but i think people like us and younger just aren't, aren't going to use this and a lot of people already don't trust facebook as it is um so i'm kind of skeptical that was going to be my next question is what's yeah. the goal here if you don't need a facebook account to use it why make this like what's their obviously it's expensive to run live video all the time what's their goal here is it a just a market share play and they just hope to pull people away from zoom but they already have an existing user base of Facebook. So I, yeah, I, I'm it's maybe with hunters. I don't get the point of it. You think it's hardware based? They want more people on portal. I think it's portal mm. sales, but if I, to me, this is such a misfire, like Jordan, you can back me up on this. Imagine if Snapchat came out with this, everybody would use it, everybody. But for me, it's like, because it's Facebook, yeah. it's like, ah, uh, they're just like creating this reputation just copying others. I do yeah, agree like, with yeah. that. Facebook like, has oh, a bad ex uh, rep for just like ripping off other products. I mean, you can do it when you're the behemoth of Facebook though. You have like unlimited resources yeah. and money. And it, as we've talked many times, like it's not hard to build a video conferencing app. The, all yeah. the stuff is kind of out there. It's WebRTC is easy to throw stuff together. You know, we built the original version of Yak in four days because TalkBox just provided like an SDK layer on top of some web stuff that just made it super easy to throw it together, which I think also brings me back to my my relationship with Clubhouse and the fact that they just got VC Twitter all excited over something that, yeah, it takes like three days to spin up. You know, Hunter, I think you really nailed it. And honestly, now that I think about it, I think it just comes down to like, Facebook's just not cool. Like, it's just not cool. No one, no, none of the cool kids are using it. No one's like, oh man, like, go check out my Facebook. Everybody's but Instagram. like, go add me on Snap or like, go add me on Instagram. Yeah. But like, face, like Facebook though, as its own thing. Is, right. It's but, not cool. But That's what you're Instagram is about. cool. So what That's if Instagram so launched this? About it. it would be cool. 100%. Something about... I'm, I'm not kidding. Like, in my opinion, yeah, I think right. Facebook isn't cool anymore. Instagram is super cool. There's just like a different, hmm. like Justin, you were just saying, this is for the grandmas. Yeah. You set it and you yeah. forget it. And you have everybody in your whole family buys the Facebook portal. And we're all going to hop on. Grandma can get, can join in. I don't see a bunch of kids at Fortnite. I don't see a bunch of employers hmm. suddenly adopting this. Just my opinion. Yeah, I, definitely. Yeah, yeah. This is the grandma play. Do you think uh, uh, kids give a shit about what they look like? Like, I find it interesting that all the kids are going to um, Snap, which is inherently very much like, you notice that people aren't taking good photos of themselves on Snap. Like, the whole point is that they're ephemeral. And then you see, like, Fortnite, obviously, you're not even your real self. And I see this, like, weird divide where it's like, I don't know, give me an age, 12 to, like, 17. There's just not, like, a care of really what you look like. And then, like... 20 and up it's instagram with like professional photos so it's very interesting to me there's this divide of like professional versus not even real in some cases like fortnite uh mm, i i think it, I, again i don't know what it is about that generation but like you said i think it just depends on the platform on instagram you want to like look super good but on snapchat like who cares i think the difference is snapchat usually is like with your really close friends like, you know, if I sent you guys an ugly photo, you know, no one would really- But you're not gonna post that to your Instagram. Right, where like, you know, thousands or hundreds of people, whoever could like see that. Mm. I don't want that to be- All like tens of my followers would see mine. Well, you don't post on Instagram anyway. That's true. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not an Instagrammer. All right, what do we have next? Um, so I threw this in, you guys didn't even know about this in advance. So this says Quibi memes are nearly non-existent outside of those roasting the app itself. That doesn't bode well for the new streaming service. So um, I don't know if you guys have been watching Quibi. I have two shows Disagree. that I enjoy. Um, one of the things that I've noticed is, is twofold. One is that they've been roasted pretty hard for not allowing you to screenshot or share content outside of the app. Um, basically because this is like a Netflix, right? It's supposed to be serious content. But a lot of people are saying like the only way they're gonna be successful is they allow that like virality effect. And then the second thing is I just, I found this tweet really interesting because I find it 
odd or interesting that memes would be the thing that determine your success. Um, Hunter, you said you disagree with this? Obviously. The, there was I know more about people complaining that they can't share photos than I've seen of actual photos of shows. Hmm. Like that is a marketing play in itself. You know, not all good press is good. Not all press is good press, and I I understand that. But they just got an insider, you know, business insider backlink for the lack of having good memes. I mean, like this is just absolutely insane. That I wish I had this problem. Like that just shows <laughs> how popular they are. That you know, it doesn't bode well. For, I disagree. You're writing about them. Uh, I mean, I think it says the same thing about Magic Leap. Um, hyped really hyped overhyped um released their product to a bit of a meh response from everybody tried to get acquired for 10 billion dollars and now they're having to lay off staff so i think it speaks to probably a bigger problem in the hype cycle of vc which is you know doesn't matter the legitimacy or the longevity of a company if they've been hyped large enough and quibi was hyped hard i mean jeffrey katzenberg and in Meg Whitman and everybody that's on their board, um, they are like literally the definition of VC hype. I don't know, Jordan, have you watched anything on Quibi? Yeah, so from like a culture perspective, I think the tech world thinks this is cool, but like the normal world, this this sucks. Like I deleted it almost instantly. I, I hated everything about it. All the younger people, no one's using it, not cool, super overhyped. I think it's gonna die soon. I think it's gonna I, I pivot. Think the, te the tech world is like, yeah, Quibi is a cool, hot new thing. But like Josh and all his friends, like my little cousins and all their friends, they all try to like, you know, this is whack. Like, who would do this? I think they'll end up pivoting. I uh, I watched the Polygon show, and then Vox just put out a new. Uh, Vox has a Netflix show called Explained, and then they just did like a short, like five minute version on Quibi called Answered. And I like that kind of con uh, content. And I think it's definitely age specific because I think most people would be like, you could easily get that content on YouTube, but I don't watch YouTube. Um, mostly because I have really bad ADD and all the shit around me all the time, like related ads, the next video up, all of the channels. I just can't use YouTube. It's just not meant for me, I guess. Uh, and I like that Quibi is super, super focused on this like one thing. I can watch it and I can just like stop using it. Which maybe is bad user behavior for for them you know i'm sure they want me to like binge watch everything but i like five minutes of a polygon show to like catch up on what's new in gaming and i like five minutes of like vox just to understand i don't know how disinfectants work um but i would never watch 30 minutes of that on netflix i would watch five minutes of that on quibi and i feel like that content's really strong but I don't want to watch like an action thriller in five minute segments. That doesn't seem interesting to me. That is something I want to sit on a couch and binge watch. And I know Jordan, you talked about this when it first launched is like, you don't casually watch television on your phone. You watch right. it on like a PlayStation or a fire TV or something. Yeah. Uh, well, also, I, I guess my point in that was like, nobody's browsing for a new show on mobile. Right. So if I, if I have a show and I have to watch it on mobile, I at least, Go to the mobile experience knowing what i'm looking for and what i'm about to watch mm. and i'm not just going to pull up my phone on mobile and be like oh this looks like a really good show let me start a 45 minute show on my phone that's i just don't think anybody's doing that and in fact i don't really know anybody who does that yeah so i mean maybe it's just me but a lot of folks i've talked to uh, no one's like you know what i was i was on my phone and i found this really good show i gotta look into it all right so starts that on. sounds like Jordan says Quibi's going to die. I say Quibi's going to pivot into informational content. Hunter says Quibi's getting a lot of press. It's going to do fine. Is that is that fair? Yeah, I think so. That's fair. We'll revisit this back in episode yeah, 10 I'm, when they're making a couple billion. And then yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll figure out who's, we'll make, who's right. We'll, we'll take some bets and, and see who is correct. All right. um, cool. So this just brings us into our actual content. Um, we listen to I our think, users and i think this is our first content that's actually about, about us, us. Yeah. yeah i know we because the first two episodes that we did that never aired were all about us so this is kind and of and then cool. we never Sorry. actually put them out but yeah you yeah, know i cool. i tweeted this out today uh this week it was exciting to put out all of these new changes put out a brand new desktop app um you know i'll just 
read the tweet for anybody who's just listening to the audio. Arguably the largest change log I've ever written. I'm sure I'm missing a ton. This release is the result of 808 commits over the span of three weeks. We rebuilt the entire Yak desktop app from scratch. Um, you know, we just hired this amazing developer, Alec. Uh, Alec, if you're listening, you've been great. You should probably get some sleep. Um, we've been working tirelessly for the last three weeks, just rebuilding our entire desktop experience from scratch. Totally wiped the code base, um, built everything fresh. Um, you know, we use this app every day, so we're well aware of its limitations and its bugs and its features and things like that. And I think, you know, Hunter, if you want to talk a little bit about the survey and what those results said, I think that'd be a good segue going into this. Yeah, I completely copied uh, Superhuman. They have a phenomenal write-up on how they find their product market fit. That's obviously something that's really important to us. Um, you know, we just launched. Now's the time to start looking at our actual metrics and taking this thing a little bit more seriously. Uh, but yeah, anyway, like one of the cool things that we found was that people actually really enjoy transcription. Um, not only did the survey say it, but also at Running Remote, their remote aid conference, and some other people I've been talking to, um, one of the biggest questions is like, what differentiates you guys from WhatsApp? So for us, uh, as soon as I start going through it, I sort of see their eyes glaze, and then as soon as I say transcription, they get it. So that's been like the, the biggest thing for me is realizing that's sort of our diamond in the rough, is being able to like speed up, slow down your messages on top of transcription and you know, people wanted to see more of transcription. They want to be able to translate their messages. So there's so much hidden power with those. Uh, you know, that to me is sort of like a, a nominal feature. It's not that big of a deal, but to other people, it seems to be a really well. Big it, deal. it has a waterfall yeah, so, effect with a lot of other cool. features, right? Is you can search now, right. you can tag things. There's topics. Uh, you can share out to a Trello card, and it will make it searchable now because the transcription gets copied and like. I guess I always think about transcription as not this ability to read it and just like skip listening to the message, but it gives you some context so you can decide if it's important or not. You know, Jordan will send me yaks throughout the day and sometimes it's something having to do with like taxes and I just don't have time to listen to it yet, but I know that that's what it's about. And so I'll just kind of like sock it away for, you know, yeah. a couple of minutes later. I think that's a really good point, Justin. Yeah, I think the biggest thing is like documentation and organization that transcription provides because then you can start segmenting things that all right this is related to taxes this is related to design and things of that nature yeah but yeah i mean in general our desktop app started with this incredibly small amount of features very narrow mindset of what the app was going to be what the platform was going to be um you know we had taken this very large bet that a floating icon that followed you around on your screen that you could always access was going to be the best user experience in the world because we don't like switching windows and you know being able to access my team kind of over top all of my other windows was super helpful um, and then we gave the app to our own internal design team and they were like this is fucking frustrating as i'll get out because now i can't access this tiny little scroll wheel at the bottom of sketch because that's where my yak icon is covering and they were constantly like moving it all over the place even quitting the app so that it wasn't in their way and you know that reaction wasn't contained to just our own team, right? We had a lot of other uh, users that came in and said the same thing. And so, you know, I'm going to share my screen uh, just because I'm going to kind of show what we've been working on. Um, this is our brand new desktop app. We've got basically the mobile app moved over to what the desktop experience could be. You know, like instead of swipe to reply, um, you know, we've got these hover so you can hover to quick reply. So if I wanted to like quickly reply to Heather right now, it's automatically recording. So it's like super, super fast. Uh, we integrated keyboard commands so I can just do command K and I can start typing and then I hit enter and I can automatically start recording. So, you know, we really built this thing to take the most advantages of the desktop environment. Uh, what's cool is like you can exit now and just like it's nowhere on my screen, but I still have the dock icon at the bottom and it'll show badges. Um, it's one click to bring it back up. A lot of people that have gotten the new app are like, oh, it's more clicks now to get to something. And it's actually less because uh, A, the quick reply is now just one click before you had to click at least three times to get into that. Um, now we have keyboard shortcuts, so it's super fast to do that. Um, we've got some really cool search. So like, I don't know, I could type in a couple things here. Uh, let's see. I don't even know what would be a good thing to type. Live demos are always Yeah, I know, awesome. right? I don't even know what would be a good thing to type here. Ooh, there's my lawyer. He just sent me a message. Um, that's actually one of the coolest things is being able to talk to our legal team over Yak. Um, because I think 
Jared works best when he's speaking because that's like phone call etiquette and what they're used to. And he said that Yak's been amazing because he doesn't crank out these massive emails or have to get on a phone call with us. Um, but what's cool about the um, search is like I can do contains so I can see any uh, Yak that contains Jordan or I could just go to from and I could see any messages from Jordan, um, which is kind of a, a nice feature that we didn't have. We didn't have search on desktop at all. It was on mobile, but it wasn't even available on desktop. Um, you know, you've got the ability to resize the container now. You can actually, um, you know, get rid of it so you have that clean desktop and you still have that nice notification at the bottom. Um, but yeah, I mean, this release represents like a huge leap forward, not only in technology, um, because we're our app is faster now. It's way less memory footprint, way less CPU usage. Um, you know, the screen sharing. Here, I'll just like pull up a quick screen share, send something to Emilio. Um, now I can actually select my different displays, which is really nice. I can do webcam kind of a la loom. We can have the little webcam guy in the bottom uh, left or whatever. Um, our screen share controls are like really powerful now. We've got nice annotation that we can, you know, do. You can even change the thickness of the, of the annotation. Um, much nicer uh, screen recording interface before you couldn't really even see uh, what you know what the time was that was recording oh we've upped the limit to 15 minutes now um, that was one of the big um, kind of asks from a lot of our users was being able to record longer form content um, I hope that none of you are sending 15 minute yaks because no one wants to listen to that crap um, but at least you can speed it up to 2x now which is nice uh, we've got a nice pop out video player um, I don't know, somewhere in here, I'm sure I have a, oh, I have these stupid videos from Emilio where he's like drawing stuff. So we can use that as an example, but we've got this nice pop-out video player, um, which is really cool, much more powerful. I can like resize it to whatever I want it to resize it to. And it'll actually remember the exact size that you size it to. So when you come back into the app later, you don't have to resize it again. Um, so yeah, just, this is super exciting for us because it, gives us the opportunity to add a lot more features, scale this thing infinitely. It brings parity to the mobile app. So if you're a mobile app user and you come on the desktop, most of the features are almost exactly the same. Um, so you can actually get a feel for one app and not have to relearn an entire new experience when you move to a different device. I don't know, Hunter, is there anything that sticks out to you that you'd want to point out? Uh, yeah, one more really big thing is that if you want to do a broadcast message so like any sort of announcement or stand up in the morning you can quickly just tap on the icon and then tap multiple people and you can send that message off before um when one of the biggest complaints before was that you can only send one-to-one -one messages on desktop and a lot of people were like i want desktop to like work like mobile mm -hmm. so i'm just really excited for this feature because um right now it's cool but within the next you know, two to four weeks when we introduce groups and all these cool features that we have coming out, that's going to be even better. So yeah, we've got groups on mobile already. That's what we're testing internally right now. So that'll be coming to both platforms. I don't know, probably next week. Um, the build that I'm running now is looking very promising. So I'm excited to get groups into everybody's hands. I think groups and in the desktop app being improved is probably like the two biggest requests yeah. that we've had. I think one thing that obviously being live, it doesn't do it justice, but just the speed at which the desktop app runs now, yeah. lightning fast. I mean, absolutely insane how fast you can move around inside of it. Speaking, you know, Jordan, tacking on top of that, one of the, the biggest takeaways I had from all of this, talking to the dozens of users the last couple of months on top of um, actual use cases and, and case studies, along with this survey, I think we just really nailed that people are looking to be the most efficient they're looking for the most efficient communication channel possible. And people, that's what people are using Yak for. Um, so when you look at everything related to superhuman, that's really what they're doing too. That's why they have a lot of you hmm. know, uh, shortcut keys and they're making email really fast, but at the end of the day, you still have to type. And so almost across the board, I would say over like 80 or 90%, people are using audio messages strictly because it's the fastest. And our, one of our best users, I love him, um, but he was like, you know, I really like you guys, but I'm not using Yak because I like you. I use it because it's the most efficient. Yeah, I mean, I think that for us was kind of an internal thing, was that we value our time. And so Yak as a whole represents this ability to kind of reclaim your time back in your day, get more stuff done. You know, I talked about this on Twitter last week. 
Um, I really want to get to a point where we're all working four day work weeks. Um, I don't see a need to have a full day on Fridays. Um, I'd like to give people time back in their day. And I think that if we can work more efficiently, we'll actually get more done in less time and we'll actually be able to chill for a little bit, you know, during the week. And um, I think part of that is having a stack for your team that promotes efficiency and productivity. And so it's exciting to see the other teams that have those same values as us that are latching onto the product and saying, wow, this is saving us so much time. A 40 minute meeting is now a five minute yak. Um, and, you know, I think we can even get that number even lower. Um, you know, we look at the data and our average message length is 19 seconds now, which is incredible because it means that users are getting a lot of information out in just 19 seconds. Um, and I think that Used you're going to be seven. Yeah. Yeah. It's gone up a little seven bit. Seven seconds. Yeah. yeah. So it's increased, which is cool because you've seen, you know, I think we saw this internally, Hunter. You know, we used to talk about this when we first launched was like a 30 second yak was, oh, my God, this is so long. And then yep. now it's been extended to a minute. Then it got extended to two minutes. Now I get a two minute yak and I'm like, oh, boy. All right. Let me put this on 2x and blow through this really quickly. Now we've extended it to 15 minutes because we found that a lot of people were sending like instructionals or how to's or feedback over screen share and so we needed a little bit more length there but it's interesting how our own perception of what a long video message or a long audio message is has changed over the course of just using the product ourselves mm -hmm. oh. for sure um yeah jordan oh no no i wasn't gonna say anything i was just agree well that's perfect any anytime you do something <laughs> i love live I love live and I love synchronous because everybody gets to go. Oh, no, you go first. No, you go first. That's the greatest. Um, but anyway, yeah, man. I just, I just really wanted to. Um, right before we get off, I just want to really nail something. Uh, just talking with one guy, he said, "I want to use, you know, shortcut keys, command K. I want to be able to start, just instantly start recording." And uh, I think it was within a half an hour we had that implemented. Mm -hmm. um, that's not normally the case where somebody asks something of us and then we implement it right away. But stuff like that is just so like. Well, yeah, I mean, we could do that. Like, that's not that hard. Let's just put that in. Let's test it out. So um, I just want to emphasize, like, if you have any feedback for us or if you've been giving us feedback, um, we actually have a whole chart and a whole list of, of features. But, you know, who knows? It could be something that could be implemented in the next build. So we appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's easy for us to add stuff like that. And if it makes a huge difference in your ability to use the app, then it's a no-brainer for us. We'll, we'll clearly be adding it. But, yeah, I mean, I think... I'm excited to send out the newsletter. We've got a newsletter prepped that has just this update, everything outlined, a link to the change log. It's got lots of you know information on what's new in this build. Um, if you haven't tried the app in a really long time and you're watching this and it was a bad experience before, definitely give the new desktop app a try. It's just the fresh download link that's on the website. Um, you know, you'll still be able to log into your old account. So definitely give this a try if you weren't a fan of the old experience. Uh, we're using it every day and it's just crazy powerful. Um, so we're pretty happy with, with everything that's changed. And I'll, and I would say the bulk of it is really just been because of user feedback. Um, so keep sending in that feedback. That's what helps us kind of move this in the direction of the way that you guys want to use the app. It's ultimately the most important thing here. So, all right, well, uh, that brings us to the end of uh, today's show. Uh, we've got some amazing guests lined up for uh, the coming weeks. Uh, Jordan, who's next week? Uh, Darren from GitLab head of remote is going to be joining us. So that'll be lots of awesome. Lots of fun. That'll be super exciting. So make sure you guys tune in next week, um, catch up with Darren. I'm sure he'll have tons of insight into all the topics that we bring up and uh, I'm going to go ahead and play us out. Thanks for joining. Mm -hmm.